rabies and germs, welcome to NJ Today. My name is McConaughey, and you're watching this either on my official YouTube channel or on Mishmashers.com. And for today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Cloverfield Paradox. I'll be honest with you, I never really understood the appeal of the Super Bowl in any respect. I know, I know, it's because I'm not really much of a sports fan, and so it's to be suspected I wouldn't understand the appeal. But even the aspects that draw in casual audiences always felt foreign from my perspective. Like the ones who only watch it for the commercials, because I mean, I don't care about commercials. It's not like I am ever surprised by any of them. Yeah, last year we had a trailer for Stranger Things 2 and that was cool, but it isn't anything that actually stands out as a significant, noteworthy moment. This year, however, when February 4th came a knockin', I was treated to a very special treat when a trailer appeared for The Cloverfield Paradox. The third installment in a loosely, messily connected universe showed up. And what made this event even more special is not only was there a trailer, but Netflix uploaded the new film Day Of. I don't even care. Before I even say my thoughts about this film, that is one of the coolest things a major movie in a series can do. In today's day and age, we're so used to films being scheduled years in advance. It's nice to have a film series embrace shrouding itself in mystery. I was excited with The Cloverfield Paradox, although I will mention I maintained realistic expectations for it. When the first Cloverfield film arrived, I didn't really think much of it. It was a so-so found footage monster film, and I felt as though I leaned more toward apathy than enthusiasm. Which is surprising how much I disliked the first Cloverfield, because the director Matt Reeves went on to direct Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, one of my all-time favorite science fiction films. However, when Tent Cloverfield Lane arrived, I found myself enthralled in a very enjoyable film I would highly recommend. The film showcased the Cloverfield franchise as a platform for low-budget supernatural films to loosely connect themselves in order to reach a higher audience on the big screen, a kind of Black Mirror approach. That's a double-edged sword, however, and that's why I kept myself from being too excited. The film Cloverfield Paradox is not a sequel to Tim Cloverfield Lane in a direct respect, but a retooled God's Particle film, brimmed with its own unique ideas and concepts. Thereby, simply because I like Tin Cloverfield Lane, I have no reason to have any expectation of the Cloverfield Paradox. What is the Cloverfield Paradox? Well, let's go ahead and dive right in, shall we? The Cloverfield Paradox is a science fiction film directed by Julius Ona and written by Oren Uziel and Doug Jung. The film was produced by J.J. Abrams, Bad Robots Productions. As far as familiar names are concerned, Julius' only other credential is a film directed as his thesis, which I haven't seen. The film follows this international group of astronauts aboard a space station who, after using a particle accelerator, which is meant to act as a combatant and solve the Earth's energy crisis, everything goes haywire, and they're left trying to find a way home after traveling to an alternative universe. As production for the Cloverfield Paradox first went underway, and I heard the plot synopsis given prior to its release, I was left underwhelmed and unenthused, mostly because I thought it sounded too much like Alien a classic science fiction film that had been ripped off so blatantly over the years that any time I hear about an extraterrestrial entity anywhere near a space shuttle, I can't help but tune out. This concept, though, which we now know after the fact, reminds me a little bit of Interstellar, which, to be honest, is a lot fresher of a concept to explore. However, after watching The Cloverfield Paradox, I can conclude that I felt more or less like I was watching an alien film. And not just any alien film, but either Prometheus or Alien Covenant. I think I would describe the Cloverfield Paradox as the antithesis of Tin Cloverfield Lane, and where that film was minimalist and simplified, focusing on the bare bones of individual characters and their plights, this film focuses more on spectacle, which might adhere to those who thought Tin Cloverfield Lane skimped out from a visual perspective. The question I had while watching it, however, was about what the most appealing aspect of a space exploration film is. If someone wanted, they could watch a documentary, look at satellite photographs, find space-related footage, but this is a film, and the most appealing aspect for me is us in said environment, reacting to it. The ability to see ourselves trying to decode a big, vast world. But without that sense of humanity, even if it's brimming with ideas, if it doesn't make you care about said ideas on a more personal level, you're left with a big, empty space of a film. The characters in this film simply do not engage, and the scenes involving them simply do not entertain. The only character I would single out is Ava Hamilton, a character whose portrayal was heard by deaf ears in this film. Simply put, this film did not deserve her performance, because the way they presented it simply did not make the most of it. I had hopes her character would be able to turn things around for the film, but the film went from tiresome to messy and tiresome by the second half. This film doesn't suck in the standard stupid decision after stupid decision. 
but it fails in the sense that it never makes me feel any one emotion at all, other than the grating despair caused from ho-hum tedium. The silver lining of the Cloverfield Paradox is that I didn't end up spending the cost of ticket admission at the local theater to see it. I will be able to walk away from it as a momentary disappointment and hope they take a better approach with the next Cloverfield film. And by the way, this is one more reason why the Super Bowl sucks. That said, these are only my thoughts, and I'd love to know what you think. Obviously, I'm aware the general consensus about this film seems to be on my side, but I won't discount those that might have actually enjoyed the film. And I'd love to hear your thoughts as to why you support it. Thanks for joining me on this review. My name's McConaughey, and I hope to see you next time.